Okay, welcome along to part two of the video where I show you how to use Excel. And uh, we'll obviously be inputting some data, show you how to use some formulas, and the third part is really how to graph the data that you have. So within your assignment that will be coming up, there's going to be a table which will involve uh, time, which is effectively your, your, your towel. I'm going to include an actual towel value. We're going to have voltage across the capacitor. There's going to be another table for voltage across the resistor. And then there's going to be another column for the current uh, in the circuit. Okay, so we'll show you how to develop each of these. So what I want to do is place in uh, some information that I have first of all. So we're going to have a zero towel. I want to have 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5. This is just for illustrative relative purposes, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So my original time that I had was, and I find what I have it written at, is 375.883, and that's in milliseconds. I'm just going to write milliseconds beside it, because I might actually use that value. So my zero time here, which is at zero tau, is effectively 375.883 milliseconds after I turned the circuit on. Um, my 0.5 tau points is going to be at uh, 0 0.025 uh, seconds after the original one, so let's get these filled out and uh, we'll carry on from there. Okay, so what we have time-wise is our augmented time starting from zero. Half a tau is 0 0.025 seconds. One tau, which is 50 milliseconds, is 0 0.05. And then one and a half tau will be 0 0.075 and so on. Two tau is 0 0.1, leading up to six tau is 0 0.3 seconds after we originally turned this circuit on. Now, for each of those, I wrote down values that I measured. The very first one we measured at zero. The next column, uh, or row rather, uh, which is half a tau, is 39.341 volts. And then we had 63.209. I'll just continue typing these in. Okay, so the original table that you will be provided with will effectively be this column here. And I'll just highlight and put a border on it. And originally, this bit will be missing. Now, in your actual uh, assessment, the column D that I have here, the towel column, isn't actually part of it. I'm just showing this for illustrative purposes. But you will have a VC, a VR, and an I column to fill in. Your VC is said to be measured, and the other two are calculated. Okay, so we need to put these values back in. I'll just do it the wrong way. So measure, calc, and calculate. So your table that you originally get, as I say, will only include the time that you have to measure, and then your VC, VR, and I are going to be empty. You're asked for column E, which is your VC, to actually measure them, and I obviously showed you on multisim just a few minutes ago on the other video. And the VR then is done by calculation. So let's just get the first um, chart out of the way as such um, that you may be asked to draw. So we're possibly three charts we can draw. We've got VC against time, we've got VR against time, or I, which is current against time. That's your three charts. So, straight away, let's actually insert a chart. Right, 
The easiest way to do this, first of all, on Multisim is to actually highlight the particular values you want. And use Control and scroll down to the two areas. So I'm now highlighting time and I'm highlighting VC, the voltage across the resistor. You can pick on recommended charts. And the one that does come up here quickly for myself is a scatter chart. And if I place her in, enlarge it a little bit, you can see it does look like the exponential growth of the other charts we've looked at within our notes. This particular one is currently void of any access tiles. You get them by going to uh, the wee plus box and picking on access tiles, probably slightly off the screen for you. And label your X and Y axis. Your Y axis is going to be uh, voltage. Capacitor, and that's in volts. And then your X axis will be time measured in seconds. And you can obviously give your, your uh, chart a title up here. Capacitor charging, voltage across, capacitor against time graph or something to that same similar nature. You can change colours and so on if you so really want. Now that's how to do the first one. That's pretty straightforward. So your this one's already pre-populated. These you measure from multi-sim and you just type in and then you obviously highlight the two and ask it to generate a chart or a graph. And the other two that we need to do are done by calculation. So VR, if you remember from your notes, you have a supply voltage, which we will label as VS. And I'm going to label it with the appropriate voltage. It's 100 volts. We say that VS is equal to the voltage drops around the circuit. So that's Kirchhoff's uh, voltage law. Now, if VS must equal whatever the drops are, and there only is two possible drops, there's VC and VR. That's only two parts to the, the circuit. Therefore, what we can say is VS is equal to VC plus VR. Now what that therefore means to calculate VR, you can transpose this here to give us VR is equal to uh, the S minus our VC. So we can put this in as a calculation the whole time. So we go equals, if you're familiar with Excel at all, to generate a, an equation, so equals, and we want the first one to be VS minus VC. Okay, so I'll move and put this up the top just so you can see what the calculation is. So this one here is going to be equals to Vs minus Vc. So we need to find Vs. Vs is down there. And it needs to stay steady. Now, I'll not show you this initially. I'll show you it the wrong way and, uh, just so you can see. Then we need to do minus, actually pressing the minus button, and then minus whatever the Vc value is beside it. So we end up with equals D15 minus E4. And we can press equals on that. And it gives us 100. Now, you can do that for each one. For instance, you can go equals to, and then you go Vs minus the one beside it. And it gives you, obviously, a correct answer. The quicker way of doing this is to drag down your equation. So if you drag down with pressing, so make sure you go to the bottom right, go to the wee plus, and then when you drag down, you end up with that there. Now, what's happened is this Vs keeps moving. So if you double-click you get to see where your equation is made up of. If I double click here, you see this blue box has continued to move down as the red box has too. So that's a wee bit of a mistake, purposely, in my case here to show you. I need the VS part of it to stay steady. So to do that, you can press F4, locks it in, or you put a dollar sign before each of the column and row identifier. Therefore, now when we drag down, that means that particular one will stay the same, only the red one now moves, which is the E4. So now I end up with voltages 160, 36 all the way dwindling down to effectively zero. And we can now create a graph for that as well. So you can pick VR, you can pick time, and then again go to insert, 
I can add the charts, and then we have a scatter one, and here is my particular chart. And again, I'm not going to edit the titles on them just for now, for time's sake, but that is how you generate the chart. The last column here is I. So to calculate current, Ohm's law, I is equal to V over R. Now the voltage that we're talking about here in this particular instance is the voltage across the uh, resistor. So is slightly more technically minded. I is equal to VR over R resistance value, that is. So that means we need to know what the value of the resistance is as part of my calculation. Now the resistor uh, equaled to 5,000 or 5 kilo ohms. It's easier typed in as a, as a whole value. I need to use that as part of my calculation. Uh, so I now go to, and what I'll do is I'll show you this calculation up the top again. I is equal to VR over R. So the first one here is, so you go equals to, I need VR, the voltage across the resistor, that's this box here. And I want to divide it by the R value. Now the R value never changes, so I want to lock that in by pressing F4. And now I can press equals, and I get 0 0.02 ohms, or uh, amps, I mean, because we're calculating current, and we can now drag this down. The one that you might spot here that's slightly different, hopefully change for us as we increase the size of that. Uh, 4.96 times 10 to the minus 5 is what that really means. Doesn't want to display it. But that's effectively what that is. So it's 4.96 times 10 to the minus 5. You should be able to change the uh, the format to display that as required. And again, you can select your value, highlight your column, highlight your time, and also then go to insert, recommend the chart. There's your scatter graph, and as we place that in, and move down slightly. There are my three possible charts, and again, I'm not going to bother editing the chart titles and so on right now. But that is effectively what you're trying to do. So you see current at a maximum when it first starts filling up, and as it gets closer and closer to the potential difference being zero, the current gets less and less also, basically, until it diminishes down. Okay. And that is how to generate your three charts.